Hey, Scott from RoosterCobb.com here. And at Seth Markwood on Instagram here. I'm Seth. Welcome to Marco Men's Breakfast Club, where it's starting to storm. Yeah. But uh, that's what we need now. It's just a little more humidity. Yeah. You're not... Well, we've got these packets here for that, so... <laughs> you're listening. Not, you're not quite wet enough. So, uh, today, I got me a yabo, I got me a yabo, I got me a yabo, hey, 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 hey. Did you know that that song was totally, the, the inspiration for that was totally improvised? Yes, I know. Did you know that me singing this on my channel was totally improvised? I did not. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, that I, was I, Little Rascals, the remake, if the, you haven't seen it. The movie, yes. So, yes, they had a dollar. Uh, got, got, yeah, and then got, got me, me a pickle a dollar. <laughs> was the later version of it. What I have in my hand here is from the Corn Cob Nation uh, Facebook group. Hashtag. Hashtag. The, uh, the, the pipe of the year. Ooh. And I only bought one of them selfishly this time. Last time I got one for each of us. But uh, so for this, I'm going to smoke this one. And boy, just happened to have at the ready. What, what year was that? I don't know. 2017. It's 2017. on the pipe. All right. It's on the pipe, guys. Feel free to read the pipe. So, oh, we got some peanuts in here. We got what I'm assuming is a receipt. Just you check that. I'm, I think that that's what it is. If it's not, you can read it. Yeah, it's a receipt. It's a receipt. Okay. Um, to be a member of the Corn Cob Nation Facebook group, you go. It's a private group. You go there and you request to be a member. We've talked about this in the past that all they want to do is make sure that they're keeping people out of there that are just going to be spammers. It's been really rare that they've had that happen, and they'll clamp down on you if you do. Um, they they will check to see if your profile has anything that relates to pipes. I don't believe that. But uh, I don't believe that because mine doesn't have anything to do with no, pipes, and I got in. That's, well, that's because you're you. Well, I mean, and, and I didn't you want don't to brag and you about don't, it, and but. you don't have to have stuff posted publicly, but they may inquire and you can say, yeah, I do this privately. So anyway, never, never smoked a pipe in my life. So in here we have a corn cob nation sticker, corn cob nation and the cob strong Ooh, I like that. sticker and then the pipe of the year. And that is boom right there so it's got the bowl of a general and yet it's got a a nice acrylic bit on it this is the acrylic bit that they are using now on the two cornell and deal exclusive pipes that they're they're offering anyway laser engraved it says nation pipe 2018 cob strong and on the bottom it also has laser yeah. engraved their logo so beautiful job guys i like that it's a great pipe to be able to have purchased this, you had to be a member of the group. That gave you then the, the access to the private link at Missouri Mearsham's website, and then they could sell you up, mm. to, up to two of these. And uh, I'm going to smoke it because, you know, I want the value of yours to go up. So is the, um, as a true cob smoker like the nation should be, uh, is the filter gone? Or does it have a oh, there, no, there should be no filter in this. Because this is that this is the acrylic bit or stem, and now that that would not accommodate a filter. It's got a nice, I'm assuming brass ferrule on there. It looks really pretty. Yeah, it's nice. Nice work on that. Uh, Kaylee, who is one of the uh, not only main members but one of the admins of the group, helped to work on that and did a nice job. It's a pretty pipe. So what we're going to smoke in it today is a tobacco that I posted a picture of on Instagram a few weeks ago saying, hey, I got this. This is a uh, Russ Olet's blend. We know so him. Russ's blend known as Fudge Cake. And in my, in, in my continuing efforts to find a chocolate tobacco, the description of this sounded good because it talked about the chocolate being subtle. Okay. I got this, I opened it up, and immediately realized that it was wet as a wet mm. dog. I mean, I had this in my van with it with it open like this for three straight days, summer heat in North Carolina, and the inside was just coated in condensation. It was given off that much moisture. 
Yeah, so you if, definitely needed a if I if I had had a couple of these, I would have tossed them in here. But I've smoked now three bowls of this, and it's finally getting close to the uh, the, the moisture level that I like, which is a little bit drier than what you're going to find at a tobacconist. So give that a shot, see what you think. Um, and then I'll tell you later what my opinion is of it now with bowl number four, I'm guessing. So let's see. There's my Yabo. There's our tobacco. Um, I wanted to give you guys an update on something that has, uh, has happened to me in the last several weeks that relates to a topic that we've talked about before. And that is... I've been eating low carb since uh, about January 20th and have lost 45 pounds. That's been since January. I am now down 75 pounds since two years ago. Woohoo! Um, boy has been doing a keto diet, and you're down how much? 82 pounds. 82 pounds. Since April that's 6th. That's amazing. Yeah. Fantastic, boy. Thank you. But something happened to me two weeks ago that uh, has changed just a tad uh, a bit of my trajectory. The reason I'm losing weight, besides the fact that I was just too big, was I need to get surgery done on my knees and I cannot be obese. And a few weeks ago, my doctor was very excited when he got to tell me, hey, you're obese. Hey, hey. thank you. So I've, I've, dropped, I've not been obese in years. I've dropped out of the morbidly obese category now and now I'm just obese and I'm about let's say 30, 35 pounds away from, from being, to being just mm -hmm. overweight. And at that point, or as I near that, is when we can start talking about setting a date for my surgery. So, the other day, <clears throat> I started getting a mystery pain in my big toe. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I racked my brain thinking, did I kick something? Which, you know, I do sometimes. I abuse my body moving things and lifting and dropping and kicking. But uh, I just just couldn't muster up what it could possibly be, and it was it was out in my big toe, right around there. And uh, the other thought I had was, could it be gout? I'd heard about gout, and that gout is potentially an issue with people doing high protein diets. And uh, went and studied what what it, what that's all about, and um, that typically occurs at this knuckle of the big toe, but it does occur in the big toe most common, but it can happen in any joint. So what's gout? Um, as our body is processing um, primarily proteins, but food that is high in purine, P-U-R-I-N-E, I think it is, okay. um, it, it converts that into uric acid, and that uric acid then passes out of our bodies as things pass out of our bodies. But if, if that's not working efficiently, either through dehydration, or if your body's just pumping out so much uric acid, you get a buildup of it, and it starts to form crystals. And those crystals, apparently, are a, a big enough mass that they're affected by gravity. Huh. So they tend to settle in the toe, oh. in the big toe. So I finally uh, suffered through the pain long enough, went to see uh, a, a doctor, urgent care, because my regular doctor wasn't available, and uh, she walks in, my, my, my shoes off, my socks off, and she says, oh, you got gout. <laughs> just, walk, just walking in the door. Because yeah, my, my toe was red and, and it yeah. was swollen, didn't match any of the rest of my toes. And um, they, they wound up uh, doing a blood test, and sure enough, I got, I got gout. And here's what's interesting to me, is our bodies produce naturally about 85% of the, of the uric acid that's already present in our bodies. Mm. And the, the, the dietary change, or dietary change, if I don't want to put the emphasis in the wrong syllable, can affect up to about 15%. So it may be firing the winning shot if yeah. you're being careful about what you consume. So it was funny, she had this checklist, and we'd already talked a little bit about what had been going on with me and, me and my diet. And she, she said, well, look, let me, let me run down the checklist. Male. Yes. Obese? Yes. But Re just obese. <laughs> Recent rapid weight loss? Yes. High protein diet? Yes. So all those things stacked up against me. Also, if you have high age too? 
age is part of it. If you have hypertension, which I do, if you're being medicated for hypertension, I don't know if the medication has an effect on it or if it's just that if you have hypertension, regardless of whether you're being medicated for it or not, hmm. it's a factor in, in gout. So they gave me a, um, a, a steroid shot, and she said, you can put your shoe back on. And I said, well, you said I'm going to get the shot. And she's, she laughed at me like I was an idiot. She goes, no, it goes in your hip. And um, so the, the nurse comes back in with the medicine, and, and I, yeah, I'm not going to just be standing there with my pants off. And I said, so I, I hear this goes in my hip. She goes, I don't know why they say that. It's going to go in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, I get the shot. They also gave me um, a one-week prescription to pregn prednisone. Pregnant. Pre pregnant. The pregnant I'm zone. Pregnant now. <laughs> You're entering the pregnant zone. <laughs> so gout is actually classified as um, arthritis. It's a form of arthritis, which I, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And um, so hopefully this will knock it out. But the dietary stuff is, I told her, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay low carb. This is effective. It works for me. I've been on several ineffective diets. Because of my pain, I'm pretty inactive. And so i got to keep up with this and get those last pounds off. And she said, look, at the very least, there are some things that you're going to want to avoid and some things that you'll want to limit. The, the red meats are one of those things that you, you want to consume sparingly. But what I didn't know, small fish, so um, sardines and anchovies and things like that, uh, crustaceans, but particularly small crustaceans, so shrimp in particular, mm. uh, are things that I guess, again, uh, produce a lot of uric acid in our bodies. And certain vegetables, like um, spinach and cauliflower and uh, asparagus, right? So what? It, what That's what all been... I've been eating for four months. Yeah, is is steak and sausage and oh yeah, spinach, asparagus, organ meats, and, cauliflower, broccoli. And, and you think, well, I don't eat liver. If you're eating sausages, you certainly do eat liver mm. and uh, and other organ meats. So. Uh, that, that treatment should be over here in just a few days. I'll let you know how it works out. Um, but what I've been reading since then, and I will go to my actual uh, actual doctor, and we'll, we'll discuss this. If it comes back, um, there's a number of maintenance drugs you can take that will help deal with that 85% of the production that uh, your diet's not going to control. That's good. But I know a lot of folks in the YouTube pipe community have dealt with gout, yeah. and some of them have had it really Real chronically. I don't want to mention names, but I think they've talked about it yeah. here on YouTube. And uh, you know, if this is something you have faced, leave a comment. Let me know what uh, what you've done to improve it. If in fact you have improved it, I hope you have. And yeah, I just saw the buddy move, and he, um, his his dad, they were very very thankful for the help because his dad has been dealing with it really? for a couple of weeks. And I mean, he was walking with a cane um, and had gotten that bad. Now, you had heard something about keto being good for mm. gout. What do you mean by that? Good for gout? I don't know. Don't, don't, no, don't, don't, okay. don't ask me much about it. So when, when you said, before you went to the doctor and you said, hey, I think I might have gout, I, I went on a little bit of a, a research kick real quick and, and saw that there are people that, that basically on the starting phases of keto, it can be bad because you're introducing more meat. But then once you become fat adapted and your body, which, which can take two to three months, and that's kind of where your body switches. So, so with keto, initially the very first set of weight loss is you're not eating carbs. And so as you lose carbs from your body, carbs are what holds water. So you lose a lot of water weight. Then the next weight loss comes off when you're just not eating sugary foods um, but then you hit a certain point where that is so low and, and you've maintained that for so long that your body starts to believe that okay the carbs aren't ever coming back and so it goes into fat adaption where it's now full-time burning fat in your body and so what I saw was that once people reach that stage of keto um, reach that stage of ketosis that that gout can actually become better uh, getting there might be problematic um, but I, I like I said I only really saw one or two articles I, I didn't research for long. so, I, so. I'd be curious if any of you 
have done keto and had found that that helped you in your your battle with gout. Yeah, it's the sort of thing that, crazy. that it's got to be, given that 85% of it is biological and only 15 is diet focused, that makes a lot of sense because otherwise all of these people who praise keto and have done it for years and years would be suffering from gout all the time. And so I've worried about that, but thankfully I'm not, I don't have many of those other risk markers. Um, and, you know, I imagine, and I don't know how closely related it is to weight either. Uh, well, I'd say it said overweight, so that was one yeah, of the risk yeah. factors. Um, so people that are doing keto who are, who are within a, a healthier weight range may not be suffering it much anyway. Really, the only thing that I know from gout is that one episode of King of the Hill where Bobby Hill gets gout and he, he won't stop eating the, I think the, the lamb, uh, the lamb euros and um but then he he does he humbles uh uh he hobbles to the the dance because the girl he was supposed to go with um uh was sad that that he he cared about his meat more than, than <laughs> going to the dance and he wouldn't stop eating it to make the gout go away i feel his pain yeah it's a great episode it's a good show i like that show did you I did well, um, anyway, man, I'm not happy about it, but you know, I'm going into a trade show this coming week, which was last week, and exactly two years ago, it's every other year, exactly two years ago, I had just gotten my diagnosis about my knees, had just gotten a knee brace, and went to the show and, and stayed one day. I just couldn't, mm. couldn't take it. And now, I'm... 75 pounds lighter. I'm a couple weeks or a couple days now that I've not been wearing my leg brace. You notice yeah. I'm not poking with my leg I, brace. I didn't and that. and I I still have it. I'll wear it if I need to. But I'm trying to get my get my muscles built up mm. because again with the surgery it's helpful to have have your muscles strengthened. And this one has been the brace has been what they call an offloading brace. Yeah. So it helps to carry some of my weight past my knee and down onto my calf. And uh, I, I just I, I noticed that the, when I take the leg brace off, my knee is very weak. Right. And I'm trying to trying to strengthen that. Are there are there any sort of exercises that you can yeah. do that would be low impact that no. would help? Swimming. 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 What about? Um, I, I would guess that uh, the elliptical would be better than some, but the worse. Theoretically, than but I but I tried it. I, I went to the gym with my daughter and and did several different exercises, thinking, okay, this is zero impact or low impact let's try this i i can't cycle my knee that way with that mm. repetitiveness just you know, was just was tearing me up even with no weight on it go back to the uh the chair um ddp yoga yeah try that again but this this leg my right leg my right knee is the worst one it's bone on bone at this point mm. my left leg hurts me more but my doctor is convinced is because it's doing more work. Mm. I'm, I'm straining it more. But uh, anyway, it's just something. Anyway, yeah. uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about, and it, I don't know how long we're going to talk about this. I hope this doesn't take us long. But um, there were some questions about us and our Chinese crap yeah. that we posted a couple weeks of. Yeah. While at the exact same time, I'm posting over on the Aristocop channel a, a little topic about... Missouri Meerschaum pipes not being made in China, not having Chinese components, mm. and yet we're over here on this channel talking about crap that you're picking up in China. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems incongruent, mm -hmm. and some folks have commented, and thank you for your comments, good or bad, mm -hmm. but that, uh, you know, why are we buying this Chinese crap? So I thought, let's talk about that. Why? Why did you, or why do we, occasionally pick up something that's Chinese. Yeah, I feel like we've, we have had this conversation. Not this week. No, I, I what I was going to say is, I, I feel like we've had this conversation, um, but more broadly and less specific to buying from China versus buying American goods. So I remember uh, two years ago, I think, we uh, were talking about Yeti as a, a, a product, and they had the um, metal mugs that were very popular, and the Walmart knockoff um, that was being sold for $10 compared to the $40 uh, Yeti version. And 
you know, we had a conversation at that point about is, is it okay that Walmart has knocked it off? How do we feel? Is there a moral obligation to not buy a knockoff product of, of that type? Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like our position is congruent now to what it was there. And that's, that's that, that at any stage of the game as a business, it is your responsibility as a business to provide value that your customer is willing to pay for. And so as a customer, y your responsibility then, not really responsibility, but it's up to you to decide if, if the price matches the value. And if it does, buy that product. And if it doesn't, maybe find an alternative or buy nothing. And so in the, the instance of the Chinese crap, that stuff is stuff that I wasn't going to buy otherwise. I absolutely would not buy it at um, American prices. You know, the, the, the torch, for instance, was a torch that's a $30 um, creme brulee torch. I'm not going to buy a $30 creme brulee torch. I don't need it. So no American manufacturer was going to get your $30. Right. Unless there's some sort of additional value that that, that brings to the table. Right? Um, for me, that value is just not there. But for $4, I think it was? Yeah, okay. Uh, for, at $4, the price matches the value to me. Um, you know, we, we talked about it uh, in this instance with relation to customer service, right? If your product can't go down in price because of manufacturing costs, right. then what customer service are you offering to give a higher value? So, so then, you know, to the Chinese product, if, if the value, the value increases if I need it today, right? That's a value. That's, that's something I'm willing to pay more for. And so if I can get it on Amazon and, and have it two days shipped, maybe the $30 becomes a higher value um, product for me. But again, it's something I'm not going to buy otherwise. I mentioned with the Rubik's Cube last week, there was a $150 version of the Rubik's Cube I thought was really great. I am not going to spend $150 on, on that Rubik's Cube. I thought about it. I was tempted by it because it's really cool. But I'm not going to, uh, realistically. And it doesn't matter now or three years from now, I'm not going to, to be spending my money with that company. Period. So it's not that I've taken money away from this American manufacturer who is buying their product from China and just marking it up, right? Because that's not a valuable product for me. Um, but at $30, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, I think I, I was about as dyed in the wool by American as anybody. And, and I remember getting into a pretty big argument with my brother-in-law when they bought a Hyundai 30 years ago. And uh, I just, I, I was disappointed that they bought this Korean vehicle when there were American cars on the market. And then it reminded me how much I hated the Chrysler I was driving that was literally falling apart around me. Right. The exterior handles had broken twice, the dashboard had split in the sunlight, interior things were breaking on it left and right. It was in the shop constantly, the dumb thing ate rotors and, and spark plugs and cables. And he never had a problem. Oh, he bought a Geo Metro is what he bought. And he drove that thing from Maine, where they lived, to Boston every single day. And for him to have a car that got 50 miles a gallon, mm -hmm. that was reliable through the whole run, I mean, he had that thing for probably 10 years, um, he just couldn't see spending more for it. It wasn't for luxury, teeny weeny little car, and uh, it's what he wanted to spend. And I had to come to terms with that, that, you know, I'm, I'm buying American out of my stubbornness, and yet this manufacturer, who I'm supporting, wasn't supporting me with quality goods. And I paid more for this car that was falling apart than he paid. Right. So it started to adjust my opinion of these things. I love buying American. I love supporting yeah. those that are supporting me and my business and, and uh, my employer and so on. We're working in a, an American corporation. Um, but I also can't say if I'm selling what is essentially an identical item, and that's assuming that we're talking identical items, right? And I'm charging twice the cost. Mm -hmm. What else am I bringing to mm -hmm. the table? Like you say, maybe there's some support, maybe there's a longer warranty, maybe there's 
better instructions and videos and things like that. And, and there's also, in some cases, there's a, a bit of a, uh, almost like a membership feel. You buy tools from the company Fest Tool, yeah. and you're part of the family. Well, that's why right? that's why someone would buy a Yeti over buying a ten dollar knockoff is because it, because of this. It's a status symbol, right? You you become part of you become part of that that tribe. It's it's basic tribalism, which is also a thing. I mean that, that that exists, but tribalism doesn't work for people who aren't part of the tribe who have no interest in being part of your tribe. You're not going to sell somebody. So a corn on cob that. nation pipe. If it were just a country gentleman with nothing different about it, except for that they laser engraved it and charged you more for it, it would be of no more value to you unless you were a member of that tribe. Right. Then, then that, that has some value. The fact that they go to the trouble of making something that's unique to them over and above the branding, that's what makes this valuable to me, and it supports the group. Right? And this has no more value than any other pipe on the table for someone who is a briar-only smoker. That's true. Right? And so a briar-only smoker, if they're looking at the Corn Cob Nation pipe or something that's $10 off the shelf or whatever the price difference is, why would they... How would they justify the additional expense? And where's that briar made? It's not American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very few pipes, with the exception of ones that are being handmade, very few production pipes are being manufactured in the United States these days. So, uh, anyway. So if quality, if quality matters and it's worth the additional cost for that good, buy that good, if quality doesn't matter, then you're paying extra for something that, that doesn't give you additional value, right? Um, same thing for customer support. Same thing for uh, feeling like a member of the tribe. There are lots of additional reasons why. Also benefits, right? Those bring benefits to people. Yeah, or, or you know, if it makes you feel good. I mean, you know, if, it, if, if it's something... We talked, we talked about this, about this knife before. <laughs> we talked about this. This is an early, early episode. When this came out, it was being, I don't know, it was custom designed by some company. It was all the rage. Um, it was going for like $175. Something like that. We got this one for like 8 bucks online. Um, and talked about this exact same, same principle then. Does this function? Does this function 200%, 200 times less well then the cost can can i justify spending 200 times that um or 20 times i guess 20 times the cost for for the other one if it doesn't if it doesn't function that much different well, and as we kind of hinted or talked a little bit about with the with the rubik's cube was there intellectual property being stolen here this guy had not patented it there was no trademark protection no design patent nothing about this was patented, they obviously didn't feel strong enough about protecting it to put a patent on it. Therefore, the manufacturer who knocked this off was well within their rights to do that. Right. That, that's how this market works. And that doesn't always happen. You know, we talk, we've talked in the past about the fidget cube was one example where the Chinese were, were able to knock it off and sell it to market before the Kickstarter was, it was uh, able to produce product, right? That's one of those situations where I bought the Kickstarter. Someone else bought the, the knockoff for me, so I have both. The Kickstarter version is better, and if, if one is, if the, the Kickstarter American made is $15 and the other is $10, i am going to recommend the $15 version yeah. because it's a higher build quality. Well, and, and the knockoff was based on... But I couldn't on, get it for Christmas. The knockoff was based on pictures of the original, mm -hmm. so they just did their best mm -hmm. reverse engineering, not knowing what was actually going on inside of it, what material was to be used. So the feel of it's different. The, the, the Chinese one, just, it's not right. It's not right when compared to the other. But you can get those now for less than five bucks. Right. All over the place. So I, I, I work in a field where the primary competitors for one of the, the, the brands that my company sells, the primary competitors are non-American non companies. We now live, thanks to the internet, in a global economy. And while... While I believe in in capitalism and believe that the free market should 
should decide and should drive business. Um, that now means that you're in a free market uh, against a global competition base. And if you're not able to compete globally, then then you just you no longer have a seat at that, that table. Your lunch is getting eaten. Yeah, yeah. And so for us, again, in our, our business, we may not, but we don't have the cheapest product um, compared to some of our competitors. So let's bring so this let's, constantly. Let's out. bring this back to Missouri Mearsham. Yeah, Missouri Mearsham has protected their most important asset, which is their corn crop, their corn, their seed corn. They continually improve and develop that product, and that's not something that's grown overseas. Innovate. And, and, yeah. and in China, their main focus is growing food for their people. And then if there's a corn cob left over and they can turn that into a pipe, that's secondary cash for them. <clears throat> if, if they were ever to get their act together and develop their own seed corn and have a pipe that is a high quality, every, every single component that would compete on at that point, probably still on price, right? Then Missouri Mearsham would have some sweating to do, right? Thank goodness, the stuff that's come out of China has been crap. They're not there yet, but but they're not. It doesn't appear that they're trying to make their pipe, their corn cob, any better, right? Because because it's the market there is it's a lot more effort for them yeah. to do that than it is to manufacture some some other hard goods. But you know that's that's the other place where your business needs to be innovating, changing, doing things better. Which they do. Yeah. As <laughs> we're smoking two pipes here that are unique. So Yeah, that again have that tribal So here's the deal to it. I don't care for this tobacco. You don't? I do not care for this tobacco. Huh. I didn't care for it bowl one, two, three, or now four. I don't like it. Huh. And it's not that it's I think that at its at its at its heart. There's something about that tobacco, and I, it's, I think it's just a uh, black Cavendish or something. Yeah, it's sort. pretty simple. It just it doesn't do anything for me. So, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I was kind of liking it. I, it's, it's Here we pretty, go. I mean, we're, it's we're consistent. It's, it's pretty. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's pretty. Um, it's not terribly unique, but given the smell and given the the amount of casing that was on it initially, it's it's not. Maybe maybe it's contrast principle of play. It's not as bad as I was expecting it to be, and so it's it's not that bad. Also, I would I would not be upset to smoke it again. This pipe, I wouldn't buy this much of it. No, but this pipe is the kind of pipe that I will not smoke frequently because it's just too heavy to be clenched. It looks thick, and I just don't spend a lot of time with a pipe in my hand. Right, so not unlike the church wardens. Yeah. So it it's the perfect shape for a display pipe. Yeah, you know because if I'm going to have one that's going to look interesting, nice. yeah. doesn't matter whether I can clench it or not. So um, anyway, I like the design. I like the construction of this. It's a pretty pretty pipe. Glad to have it in my collection. You're not going to see me smoking it very frequently. Fair. Yeah. So maybe I'll smoke it with this stuff. So. Since it's come to the surface, we've talked about it a few weeks. What is your opinion on uh, buying Chinese goods, American goods? Um, do you have strong feelings one way or the other? Let us know um, in the comments down below. I think that does it for us yep. for this week. That's it. Uh, we will see you next week, and the rain shall continue. And we'll be smoking some more tobacco that will probably be subpar. Yes. Looking, <laughs> That's so our favorite forward, kind. So looking forward to that. Make it a great week. See ya.